How's it going guys? Our Triple XC, aka the Raging Cajun here. And I appreciate you guys coming back to the channel. Um, this is gonna be a Bakugan video. I know the channel's kind of going in two different directions, but uh I gotta I gotta pay my dues to the people that uh that let me let me do this, kinda. My Bakugan people. Um so uh I was recently invited to the Bakugan Invitational, and by now the time that this video is going up, you've probably all seen everything that came out of that. So this is not a news update video. I'm not gonna be like showing you anything. Uh, I'm just going to be talking about my experience, what I think, and how I think Bakugan is going to be moving forward. Um, and, you know, everything after this point, what do I think is kind of going to go down. Um, but just some points from my experience. Um, the weekend was cool, man. We, um, we had Saturday, which was a big long conference. It was like an uh, hour and a half, two hours. Uh, where most of it was consumed by talking to the voice actors and also... Uh, a Q Q and A section where we were able to tap it, type into a chat box, um, and have the devs answer some. So Justin and Gary, um, and anybody else who was there to answer them. Uh, also, we had a little little voice chat going on on Discord with all of the Baku Masters and stuff together. Uh, and VK was kind of peeping in there and listening to us, uh, kind of bicker and whatever. <laughs> Uh, and he would pose questions coming from us from that too. So, um, there was no shortage of questions asked. I will say that we did, which is something I'm happy and proud about because I feel like I had a large part in some of the people who were invited this year. Um, some people were <laughs> like memeing saying I was like Nick Fury gathering the Avengers. <laughs> um, I'm not like taking credit for things, but yes, I was pushing, uh, for quite a few people to be invited this year. And, and I'm glad that they were there because uh, most of them, you know, posed good questions and things that I felt needed to be addressed, uh, which was better than previous years where those things don't actually get addressed because, you know, large, con lar large content creators can't really focus on the, 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 the everyday nitty gritty of the competitive player like some people do. And so... Uh, I thought it was a good idea to bring these people in, and we had some cool questions answered. And I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. If not, check out Toolbox, check out Queso, um, uh, Zionic Blader, Briar66, uh, Ventus Traveler, all those guys. Um, and there's more, obviously. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at the Discord chat trying to figure out who was there. Uh, anyway, um, my experience with all that was that it was all right. Um, we got Geogon. Uh, which you've all probably seen by now. They are the non-spherical Bakugan that you can use to uh, kind of replace your Bakugan in battle um, during that turn. So anytime you can re-roll your Bakugan, you can say, oop, Geogon time. Pick up your Geogon, switch the Bakugan out of the game for the Geogon, replace the core, and place the Geogon on the Matrix anywhere you want. Um, and as a concept, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Um, but, uh, competitive gameplay wise, which I know that they don't always completely think about. Um, but, uh, basically what it's going to come down to is, you know, how cheap can we make these things? And why is that so important? Well, if you make it zero or maybe one cost, which I think we've seen a one cost, um, it's basically a free core stealing mechanic um not free but one cost core stealing mechanic when right now we have glimmering glaive which does that but now you're just making the degenerate thing more degenerate <laughs> by making it cheaper um so i mean if you're playing someone who you know needs their helix for their hydras and you know traditionally you're only carrying one of those helixes uh if you get your one cost geogon first turn um, <clears throat> you can go and grab that Hydrus, uh, Hy <laughs> Helix and put it on your side for the rest of the game. And so it's just kind of, just kind of strange, I have to say. Um, they're cool. They look cool. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited about them. They're, they're all going to come with the solid and also the like neon clear plastic. Uh, and so... Um, they're going to look really cool. And the new Bakugan, like actual spherical ones, are pretty neat as well. Um, I will say this. Uh, they are what appears to be killing off 
um, all of the Awesome Ones main character Bakugan, <laughs> except Dragonoid and Nilius. So, Pegatrix? Dead. Hydrus? Dead. Halcor? Dead. And of course, Trox is dead. And I'm not happy about it. <laughs> like, I'm genuinely not. Um, we were joking about it a lot, and it was kind of a meme. You probably saw a few of the memes fly out of the Discord. Um, but, like, I don't know how I feel about just completely eradicating them. And I'm assuming this is spoilers for the end of the second season of the show, or at least that's what I was told. But, um, I don't know, man. Like, they are not there anymore. Like, Winton's partner Bakugan now is Falcron, which is the big falcon green dude. Um, the Trox is gone. <laughs> like, we just had Champions of Destroyer come out, which we can talk about that in a second, but, like, that game focuses on, like, a select few Bakugan. And then, right after that game comes out, your next season of the show, if anyone happened to join this franchise via Champions of Destroyer, all those dudes are gone. It's a Dragonoid. So, I don't know. I don't like that decision. Not just because I'm biased, because I like Trox. Love Trox. I love him. Um, but it's just sad. Uh, you know, I feel bad for all the Pegatrix lovers out there. Poppy, Fang Shaman. Anybody else I'm not thinking of? Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. That one's weird. Um, anyway, let's talk about, well, first of all, the voice actors were there for a while. It was a good time talking to them. Uh, it was actually... Julius and Devin, so Magnus and Winton, and also, uh, like a surprise guest kind of deal, because the Bakugan people didn't even realize they were there, uh, Dan and Leo were there, uh, the voice actors that play those characters, uh, and they were really interesting to talk to, because you don't really get to talk to them too often, uh, Julius and Devin have been traditionally very vocal and, uh, interactive in the community, and, um, personally, uh, my experience with Julius is he's a great person, uh, he's a great guy to talk to, um, you know, he seems like a guy that I could be friends with if we were, you know, in close proximity. Um, and Devin's a cool guy, too. <clears throat> but uh, voice actors were cool. I, I will say the segment where we talked to them might have been a little dragged out. Um, but uh, it's always a pleasure to get to talk to those guys. Uh, so it was, it was pretty cool in hindsight. <sighs> Let's talk about Champions of Vestroya. So, um... I waited to make this video uh, because there was supposed to be an update that came out that helped fix the game. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, the game was broken. <laughs> you could lose your save data uh, relatively easily. Um, and that update is now out. Uh, and it helped recover some people's save data. Uh, or at least help them progress back and get into the game and, and continue the game. Because sometimes it just soft locked you. Uh, but, um, Champions of Astroia, man, I, I put my review out and I, I was really honored to get all that, you know, um, they sent it to me, I reviewed it and I played it for a little while. I stopped playing once uh, I realized that my, I could lose all of my progress, which, um, for me personally, if, if I lose my progress in a game, I'm probably never going to pick it up again. Uh, I just, I move on to the next thing. It's like, oh crap, well, this is over. Next game, please, you know. Um, so I, I didn't want to put myself through that, <laughs> but at the same time, I also still have not picked it back up since then. So I, I am like a third of the way through the game and it ain't happening, you know, uh, uh, at the end of that review, I said, it's okay if you like the game and I still stand by that. Um, but, um, maybe some of my feelings towards the game itself have maybe changed. Um, you, you know, it, it's not good. Uh, it's, it's not, um, <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> it's not a good game. <laughs> so we had the tournament, right? And most of you probably saw, or at least heard what happened, right? Fang Shaman won. Congratulations to you. You, you did great. You done good. You did it. Um, but what you did show, <laughs> uh, Fang Shaman is that, um, the game is, is broken competitively. Uh, you can stun lock people. So you can make your Bakugan stun the other Bakugan. And you can also, as the player, stun the other player. At the same time, in fact. So it's double stun. You can't even do anything. 
Um, and that's boring and not fun to watch. <laughs> and ooh, I don't know. Champions of Astoria needs to be fixed. But at the same time, I am quite certain, in my humble opinion, uh, that uh, WayForward is not going to continue making stuff for the game. Uh, we, you know, we talk and we jest about, uh, oh, they, they should add Maxitor into the game, or they should add Hydronoid into the game. You know, that kind of stuff probably will not happen, guys. Right now, they have to spend all of their developmental time for the game, post-developmental, post-developmental time on the game, making it not crash, making it not fail while you play it. Um, then once that's done, they can maybe focus on balancing issues. And then once that's done, they can possibly maybe add some characters if they show enough support. So, um, I've never been this negative about something in one of my videos, but guys, geez, um, just go watch the replay of the tournament, um, and just see what happened. We had one player whose game completely corrupted before the tournament came in with one, uh, very, or two very underleveled Bakugan, or maybe he got up to three. Negative legend. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. I know that that happened to you, and I'm, I'm quite sad for you. Uh, yeah, um, COV is a problem, um, but card game-wise, they're moving forward. They are trying to push for LGS support, uh, which they said they were going to do before uh, coronavirus hit, and uh, we all know that that was a problem. Um, coronavirus hit, and you can't do many things during a pandemic. Um, so... They're trying at the first of the year uh, to not rebrand, because they already rebranded to Pro, but re-push uh, for LGS support. Um, there is a website that you can go to as a retailer, not as a fan, uh, to order product for your store. You have to apply. Once you get approved, you get that. They're going to purposefully, very slowly, uh, only select a few stores to make sure that their system works, which is cool to hear. At least they're trying to think about it. Um, there will be blind boxes. They, you will be able to sell uh, booster boxes. You will be able to buy packs, whatever the store chooses. Um, and so, but yeah, there's going to be a cool push for LGS. Now, personally, um, I don't think that I will be able to convince my personal local game store to partake um we uh we did before uh with age of orlis and you've seen that on my channel you can go back look up the age of orlis pre-release video on my channel we had a great time um but what that did was leave him my store owner with like a ton of starter decks that all the bakugan players in the area had already and you can't just sell the same starter deck over and over again to the same people. And we ran out of packs. So he was unfortunately left with a stack of starter decks that I don't even know what happened to them. To be honest with you. <laughs> I don't know where they are, what happened to them. Uh, but it was, it, it was just unfortunate and it left a bad taste in my mouth because I had my name attached to that being who I am and what I did for it. Um, and since then, I haven't had the heart to ask him about Bakugan and stuff like that because I knew of the or unorganizational um, you know, affiliation it had. Uh, so if it proves itself in this program, I will probably you know, try to make a push, find some players again. Like I said, I don't have anyone to play the game with anymore. Um, you know, admittedly, my play group has <laughs> most definitely moved uh, into playing the new Digimon TCG. Um, as you can tell by some of the recent work on my channel. Um, and so, if Bakugan will prove itself this year, uh, I can pick the game back up. I still have my cards. You know, I am definitely willing to pick it back up again. I just don't have anyone to play it with. So, I, I need it to do what it needs to do to let other people want to play it. 
right now I don't have people that want to because of the issues historically wrong with it. So anyway, that's my thoughts and stuff from the uh, event this past weekend. Um, I appreciate you guys being here for another video on the channel. Um, future stuff. Uh, the, the first set of the Digimon TCG is coming out, uh, and we're going to be having at least one box opening. We have five boxes coming in. Um, we pre-ordered them from the, from our LGS, uh, and then also starter decks and everything. Um, so we don't have an event planned for it, but we are getting five boxes. So I'm sure we'll have some sort of opening and then also some gameplay as soon as possible. So y'all stay tuned for that. I appreciate y'all being here. I hope y'all enjoyed all the information from the Invitational. Uh, and I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, comment what you think about Geogon, Champions of Restroya, uh, or uh, any of the LGS stuff uh, down below. Uh, and I'll try my best to get back to you. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time on the channel. See you later. Bye.